getting um, uh, getting stopped by the, um, the Estonian border patrol. They're checking my passport now. Continue on Route 187 for four kilometers. This route crosses a country border. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We're going on a quick uh, sunset adventure. We're going to go enter into Russia without going through the border control. Let's go figure it out. Okay, so now we're getting uh, very close to the border region and um, a very interesting monument that I want to show you. As I was just driving by, I saw it. I always stop for these kinds of monuments because I think they're so... Um... If you see a monument like this in a town, it usually means something pretty important to them, especially if it's in... This is like the center of the village over here, but also since it's so well-maintained. You can learn a lot from these kind of statues, not only about like the values of the people, but also their history, of course. It's from 1918 to 1920, which, thinking back in time, that's during World War I, but that's not really directly affected in this region. And so I'm trying to figure out what exactly it's for, translating it in Estonian, then um, basically it's saying to the, the soldiers, the defenders of Petsurimal, Petsurimal. I'm thinking, where is that? Where is that? Where is that? It turns out that's, this, that's the old name of this district. This whole district right on the border with Russia. Russia is probably about five miles that way, but this area was annexed then by the Soviets. Um, and so then it ceased to exist. So it's interesting to see a monument for a place that doesn't technically exist anymore. Anyway, let's hop back in the car. We're getting very close. I think we're probably about um, 10 minutes away from getting to where the border snakes. And that's the intriguing part that I'm looking for. Okay, let's go. I was literally just getting ready to whip around the corner and uh, pass by something. I'm like, whoa, gotta stop real quick. Because over here you can see some, um, not only some old military armaments, but these are really the signs that um, that we're getting close to Russia. But one other, perhaps more important thing. Okay, dude, you can pass me. <laughs> okay. Um, perhaps one more more important thing, right there, hiding. A little ladder. A little ladder. You know, I've been looking and looking and looking this entire time over in this region, like all of Estonia. I'm looking. Where are the ladders? Ladder, ladder, ladder. There's no ladders. And so the only place I can find a lot of is apparently over here on the Russian side of the border. Okay, let's keep going. Getting, um, uh, getting stopped by the, um, the Estonian border patrol. They're checking my passport now. So that right there was the Estonian um, border control, the, the military. <laughs> and so two guys came up. I was just stopping here because I wanted to talk about this sign right here, talking about how the road is is partly financed by both Russia and Estonia. But um, so as I was stopping there to, to, to basically translate it and read it, then they pulled up right behind me and they're like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> and asking questions, asking questions. And then they want to see my, uh, my passport and uh, all the, the car registration, they're checking all my papers, and then they check it in their system and everything. And uh, they're like, you know that you're gonna drive through Russia in just a moment. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's why I come out here. And I explained, you know, I've been to a lot of countries and um, and the, the kind of stuff that I like to see, you know, like borders and interesting stuff like this. And uh, so they're like, they're reaffirming to me that when you get up there, you're coming up on the, the border area. So it's basically the road will go through Russia. Um, he said, you're not allowed to stop in the Russia part. Do not stop. Um, he said though, that if you really want to, Estonia, we don't really care about these things. So you can stop on the Estonian side and then take a look inside. Um, but other than that, I usually just have to drive through. And so I was asking him, you know, can I, um, uh, can I take photos? You know, and he said, no problem. <laughs> and I said, does Russia 
um, have cameras or like security or this kind of stuff there. And he said, it's better I don't tell you, no comment. <laughs> so that's really interesting. Okay, so we're coming up on the, uh, the border area. Um, like I said, I can't stop. So I'm gonna see if I can find where the Estonian side is, stop and then maybe walk into it a little bit. Okay, that's a nice introduction. <laughs> Okay, so we've come from the first part of the border. I think I can film here. I don't know if I'm breaking any rules. I'm sorry if I am. I don't mean to cause any trouble. But we have it in um, Estonian, English, and then Russian. So attention, this 30 meter section of the road passes through the territory of the Russian Federation. Stopping the vehicle and walking are prohibited. So you can see where the, the fencing and this kind of stuff is. That fence right there, that's actually Russia. And so um, I'm not gonna walk up to that area, but I think it goes past just this first part and then the border goes away and then it comes back up and then we have to actually drive through it. So, um, at that part, oh, I am definitely not gonna get outside. So I'm just gonna keep the camera here and we'll drive through and see what happens. Okay, so we just drove past that first part. Um, I'm not sure how well you could see it, but on the, the left side, so there was a fence, and then it was a like a, a big dirt patch. Like it looks like the kind of place like where you put like landmines or something. I don't think that's what it is, but it's like a very clear um, gravel patch that they maintain. Um, but then the actual uh, concrete markers um, of the Russian Federation, and so it had the Russian um, emblem, the the eagle on it. So um, that's quite interesting. Okay, so now. Um, that's just driving right past it. That's seeing it. So um, now we're going to come up on the part that we actually go through um, Russia without using a visa. There's not going to be a document to check as far as I know, but things could be height, like heightened just because of this whole Russia-Ukraine thing. So um, that should be coming up in just a sec. Okay, and now we're coming up on it again. Uh, so this is the, the Setsi boot, so this is the part that we actually drive through. Again, same sign, stopping, and everything is prohibited for one kilometer. So you can see on the left side that that's where the border is. And the, um, uh, technically, the Russian border is also on the right here, but it looks like they don't try to um, maintain it per se. But yeah, uh, so left side, not only this green fence where the tree line is, and there's a big netted fence, and that too then says no entrance. Um, as I look on the map, we're still technically inside of it. So um, now we're, we're in the heart of the Sitsi Boot. Some power lines here. I don't know why there'd be a power line here though. Maybe there's some kind of um, uh, border detection area. Because technically if I went to the left, uh, then I would I would be in mainland Russia. Um, I'm not sure how far I could get before I run into more checkpoints that would probably find you if you tried to sneak in. But uh, yeah. Okay, and this is coming up on the end of the uh, little Russian part. On the left part, you see that sign and the Estonian sign. And now we're uh, technically outside of. Um, back in Sisniki. So back into um, back into Estonia then. Uh, but that's a really um, kind of interesting border, um, especially the fact that you can actually drive through. I'm really not sure why, like how that ever came to be. Uh, maybe the road was built before the border was solidified. I'm imagining that would have been though, like you know, prior to the 40s or so when um, the Estonian Republic was basically part of Russia. Um, so intriguing. Um, you know, uh, I'll pull over in just a minute because I want to talk about a few other interesting details about the hype, like the, the heightened border security and border stresses that are going on right now because of all the Ukraine stuff. So give me just a minute. Let me pull over. Okay. So, um, uh, before I talk about this last part, um, we're coming up to um, a sacred uh, pagan site that's literally just like three or four minutes away from the uh, 
the Russian exclave part there. But um, the thing that I want to talk about um, is that how the whole Russian aggression stuff has affected these countries on the edge of NATO, the countries that are on the edge of EU, uh, especially these Baltic countries. So um, uh, throughout all of Estonia, I was talking about this in my last video a bit, about how I've met a ton of uh, Ukrainians all over in even the small villages in Estonia. Um, but, uh, and these border checkpoints um, that you saw in my last video at the, the, the little city of Volga, where it splits between Latvia and Estonia, how they set up a temporary border police uh, just to check out the documents if they're Ukrainians. But um, the important thing that I wanted to talk about, which I didn't say yet, is that um, a few days ago, I was taking a ferry out in the islands and I ran into some, uh, some NATO members, um, Estonian NATO members. Yeah, this is the, uh, the hill. Um, anyway, but um, I ran into these NATO members and I was asking them, you know, that I love military history. I love going to, um, like, okay, so a few months ago I was in Axelp at the Swiss, um, I'll pick, put a link to that video, but um, the Swiss Air Force fighting show. And um, you can get onto the, the Swiss Air Force like military bases and you can get up close to the F-18s, watch them take off. And so I was asking them, can you do anything like this here in, um, in Estonia? And they were telling me no, especially not now, because now um, with all this aggression, um, all kinds of countries are sending in um, fighter jets and everything just in the last month, all, all sending in fighter jets to um, this last little like all the airstrips that border Russia and we're very close to like St. Petersburg and Moscow so if things escalated which I really hope they don't and I think all of us hope they wouldn't but um then they'd be literally right on the doorstep and so um uh, he, the way that the NATO dis the NATO guy described it to me is that he said uh the the landing strips in Estonia are like parking lots right now um, so there's like Danish Air Force fighters there's uh, United States sent in people, Belgium, Germany. And so they're all uh, basically just waiting there and they're doing firing drills and all this kind of stuff. So um, this though is a great example uh, that I get stopped by the police just for driving through a road that normally has no problem um, just because the tensions are so high right now. Anyway, um, so uh, I also wanted to show you this last thing before we finish up the video. Um, so this is the um, basically the a statue to the god Seiko. Um, which is like a pagan god for the old people that used to live here. So this entire huge region, um, it was the Sikoma people, um, a, a, like an ethnic minority now here in Estonia. And so uh, when the new borders were drawn between uh, Russia and Estonia, the border is right over there, maybe about two miles, um, that it cut straight through their native land and it separated and divided these um, ancient people. Um, so then uh, now like they've tried to rebuild some of their... their um, the rituals and everything. Um, it's it's a very essential, like basic um, kind of pagan religion though. It's not like super, super crazy. Basically, I mean, this the statue, the um, the, the shrine to um, to Peko. Peko is a, um, uh, the god of uh, crops. So basically to have good crops in this area, which makes sense. And so you can see people leaving these kinds of offerings. Uh, actually, we got a whole bunch of money in here too. Um, but the, I don't think it's necessarily like I think it's more like for them like a cultural thing, like a tradition, rather than like a hardcore like firm set belief. Um, but uh, one thing that's kind of interesting about this this area, this hill that we're on, um, the Sekoma people, the Seiko people, uh, they believe um, in old times. the The old story is that it's um, it's the place where God came on a chariot to come and pick up people um, after they died, so that they could go to heaven. So that's what this this hill is for, apparently. But Anyway, uh, that's gonna wrap it up for this video here at the, the, the shrine of Peko. We got some, this is like a Himalayas. Actually, it literally is, it's, in, it's Sanskrit. <laughs> I'm thinking, wow, this does look like a, it looks like what you'd see in Mount Everest. And yeah, it's Sanskrit, interesting. But, um, so I guess it, it goes to show that it's more of like, it's the, the cultural, the tradition, the vibe here, not so much the, uh, the, the truth to accuracy. But anyway, okay, that's gonna wrap it up. See you guys later. Good night.